pretty much the center of North America. And this was the moon basically today rising. So to discount the actual factual that the moon was not at the South Pole, okay, and basically you'll have the other planets too. I'm floating them right now. So we'll go to that. And this is what I'm talking about because basically this is not the moon. And what I'll do is I'll blow in on this. And this is more than likely pan stars, but we really can't be exactly because what they're doing is they're freezing. I'm not even going to waste the time to show it, but the Palau, the southern, actually it's not the southern because when you see the water, they're in Antarctica, okay? But they're pretty close to the edge of Antarctica because basically the camera at the other side of this, the other camera that views to the north, because they're at the South Pole, but they're not really at the South Pole. There's a lot. Antarctica is huge. There's a lot of mileage between the coast here because they're pretty close to the coast right here. Because past this windmill over to this direction here is the north camera. It's like a northeast camera. They consider this kind of like east-west camera or basically an east, not east-west, but an east-north camera is what they kind of consider this. Now, this is the sun here. Gleaming, glimmering off the off that this isn't the sun here and we're gonna go over here and we're gonna blow in on this and you're not seeing it because of what I'll also blow up and slide over here on that because they're not letting you see it for what scientific reasons or something like that but that should, pretty much should be pan stars right there that you're seeing and like I say pan stars is absolutely a falling star okay because basically that there is what is falling and I'll show you the footage here in a second but I want to show you the back of Nehemiah station so that's a good look at that there okay we're at 999 okay and I'm not going to really blow in on this with the magnifier because it's really not going to show you much more than that it's just going to be a fiery star uh, maybe if I got time at the end of this real fast there's the back of the Nehemiah station now we were seeing, if anybody was noticing yesterday, we were seeing the glimmering, and actually now I'll blow in because that's a star basically there, glimmering off of whatever on the top of the Nehemiah station. It's a star. And basically, and I'm going to go down in size real fast to, well, it'll pop all the way down to 200 because you're seeing that star right there is what you're seeing there. And then this is the falling star, which is basically pan stars, okay? And they named it after the telescope in Australia. It's in an Australian American telescope joint venture down there. That basically found this thing first off two years ago <clears throat> okay two years ago so what we're gonna do is we're gonna step back I'll get down on size too we'll get to like 150 and then we'll scoot up a little bit so I should be able to get the whole shot in with and basically I don't think I'll be missing much as long as I can keep the control buttons in here and I'm gonna step back we're bringing the Sun back we're making the Sun set because we're rolling the film back and basically, as you notice, we just made pan stars go away because here is there's the sun, 620 time, 610 UTC, okay, 550 UTC, and you can pretty much see it. Even though I got the time in half, you can pretty much see it down there on the bottom, okay. So the sun and the super giants come up, and you can see the different layers of the sun and the super giants as it comes up. Okay, and we'll get all the way back to. If I keep tapping here in the right spot, you got darkness. Remember at the South Pole, they get a lot of sunlight down there. Just like Alaska has certain times of the year, because up north, they'll get the sun for 23, 24 hours a day or something like that. Okay, so there goes the sun, okay? And it's like 7 UTC. And then here comes our <clears throat> pan stars, more than likely. And it's not anything else. And I'll show you how fast it goes off the horizon. <clears throat> now at nighttime, I got someone who's got shots of it recently. And you know that that's pan stars, and that is not a flipping comet, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So like, you can see it really clear at the South Pole, because on the low on the horizon, you can see it. And now I'm going to be searching for... There is some data that I can throw you. I'm going to get rid of that. Basically, we're, we, if you, this is the CME. We will, I mean, we haven't got anything right now, but we'll probably end up with a C or an M pretty soon because it's, it's, the sun is very, very quiet right now. Everything's moved away pretty much on the backside right now. 
I had this stuff earlier today, so this stuff isn't the freshest. So this is the, the shot, and I'll give the guy's name in a second. He's got a shot of it going down after the sun goes down. He caught this, okay? And basically, this is a zoom in, okay? And then I'll give you his name, and that's Pan Stars, okay? Pan Stars is a falling, flipping star. It's not a comet, okay? It's so damn far away, and it's so big. Remember, that meteorite that I showed you in the video that I uploaded before this, like John Chumak, Chumak, okay? John Chumak. Okay, in Virginia, he got that shot, okay? So basically, after the sun, sun goes down low on the horizon, and he was in Virginia that he caught that, okay? So actual factual, we got a lot of stuff going on, and I um, basically have showed you enough of showing you this, and I can just step and then see it's gone in the next frame. And it, just believe me, at the other video, they locked it up, and they just basically don't let you play it. And I was able to catch it and show it to you, now what I've got is I've got it queued up and I've already got the coordinates down here for the South Pole, basically Antarctica, basically the base. I've got the, the Nehemiah locked in here. That's what I usually have mine set at. I don't really look at much else. I don't go looking around because I like actual factual what's knowing what's out there. So everything you pretty much get from me. Now what I'll do is I'll put the moon here and that should be the moon coming there on the bottom. and. I don't know if it's already went by or not. And what I do, it basically, this is my central standard time here. So you got a minus. Uh, and so I got the moon locked in. And then I'll take the land away. And remember, we're at the south pole. So you can see, and then I'll put the land back in. So the moon's already to the north, okay? Because basically, we're at the south pole, as you can see. You see what I'm saying? They're at the south pole looking. You can see by looking at there's the South Pole, okay, right above their heads. And they're on the coast of Antarctica right down there, okay. So then I'll put the land mass back in, like if we had, as you, as you can see, and then it, it's daylight and it goes. So I had a recording glitch there, and so basically really fast, I'll just take everything out and I'll put the moon in, and there's Venus and the sun getting ready to come up above and we're, I guess we're at the south, see? So when you're at the South Pole, you're basically there, remember this station, this cameras and stuff like that are at the northeast, the very northeast corner of Antarctica. And there's a vast, Antarctica is vast. And to get to the exact South Pole, it's a long ways away from even the station down there, but they get a great view because they're looking at, okay? So then you get the sun and the moon, okay? Because I put the moon in. And then I'll put the landmass back. Now remember, I've got to go back six hours at least. So I'm going to go to midnight my time because 7 o'clock, there's like a five to six hour difference of UTC GMT. Okay? Because this is Central Standard Time i got to set at. So basically I'm going to go back and we'll get the clock to kind of click to the hours. Okay? And the, but remember the location wise, we're sitting at the South Bowl. Okay, so now I hit play, and I got to hit fast, get it to go again, because I, I went too doggone fast. We'll get it queued up just right, so you realize that I'm not ever really playing with anything. So when we get to midnight here in a second, you can realize down there at the South Pole, because I could put the land back in, the last the land mass, but we're getting up to the 2400 hour, which is nighttime, okay? So we're at 1 o'clock in the morning, and it's like an hour off. So I'll put the land back in, and we'll get a good idea because at this time, even if I, you know, what I'll do is I'll just play with it. I'll back up an hour and go an hour ahead from now because we, we should be matching close to the 7 o'clock hour time that they had down there, okay? And as you can see there, I'll take the land away, okay? And you wouldn't have seen the moon. The moon wouldn't have been up high enough, okay? So actual factual, just letting everybody know that this is what exactly what we're seeing. So I'll go back an hour, Okay, so no matter what, as you can see, and I'll put the land back in, no matter what, the moon's not there. Okay, so this is absolutely not the moon that you're seeing down there, because this is the time differential thing. So basically, it's midnight central standard time, but as I hit play, and then we'll go faster and so forth, and then I'll actually get take the land mass away, boom, and then we'll hit... Uh, play I don't really mess with this stuff too much folks but I just want to let everybody know so we basically got the land away and I'll be able to hit 
we get the damn thing to go here. Come on, you piece of sh... All right. I know, try to keep it PG for the kids, okay? But like I said, if your kids can't swear, they're going to get embarrassed to hell on there at school, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the moon's below the horizon, so you ain't even going to see the moon down there, because that's the horizon line. Okay? And then... Uh, and you can adjust and have it up higher too, but I usually like to have it so that the idea of someone's just sitting on a land mass when they're watching this. And then I'll hit forward, and then you're going to see everything that's going to be coming along on, and I'll hit a little bit faster. And down there, the sun is up because it's like 7 UTC in the morning. Forget this clock. This is, I had to move it back. You see? So, as they have Saturn and so forth. Coming along, but that's way four hours after their 7 UTC time. You see, there was really nothing around. So you just basically have great knowledge, okay, because there's four hours difference there. And actually, just for the heck of it, I'll just play it ahead six, seven hours here, okay? So the only thing that was around was Saturn, and you know absolutely that it wasn't Saturn that you could see there, okay? And remember, it was low on the horizon line. So now we've already, like, it, this take, takes a long time to play this stuff, so basically I'm just going to hit play. And we'll hit it, try to get it to go by the hour. And basically, you see the 24th. And remember, there's, this is Central Standard Time. So this is when the sun came up. So whatever the time difference is from down there, you remember it's the north east coast of Antarctica. Okay? So here comes the sun. And actually, I think that might be, uh, that is the sun. So that's the time difference at the clock. You can see there. And actually, is that Venus that they're showing there? So anyway, the actual factual is that as you can see how clear it is with planetoid objects coming by, that that was pan stars that followed the sun. Now, making this Sunday night, most people are going to probably see this Monday sometime, and I'll probably have another video that I've uploaded, because I'm going to put two or three videos up today on Sunday evening really late because basically I've had stuff that I've had to hold back because we had so much stuff going on with pan stars so I want to give you some actual factual on uh, this is basically our object that's up by Saturn and it's the freshest shot I have of it and I'll be able to prove that and no it's not Mercury and no that's not Earth okay that is basically a glimpse, and that's the freshest look that we've got at that object that's up by Saturn. And there's a good possibility that, that might be Saturn right there above there. That might be Saturn, okay? But this is our object that we've got up by Saturn, okay? And they've been keeping an eye on it. And I'll show you that Mercury and Earth are basically, factually, actually, uh, I think I can go to it really fast right here. And I'll slide over that. There is Earth. There is Mercury. And I'll slide over, and we've got our reference points that have been showing people. We have our objects here, and then we slide a little bit more over, and you got Earth and Mercury again in the blue background. And then you got the fact that that's Saturn there that I just showed you in that freshest shot, and that's our object that's up there by Saturn. And I'll bring you down, and you can see the dates and the times on these two shots. And you've already seen the shot that the freshest thing I've got. So, and basically, let me go show you that someone's got to not worry about, they've already rolled the satellite because I proved that they rolled the satellite already by looking at and showing everybody what's at my videos. And if everybody's been paying attention and watching them, and if anybody's been gone for a few days or it doesn't take too long to fall behind on the actual, we got pan stars down there. And basically, I also showed everybody that they already rolled the satellite and I already showed that footage there in that video. You can watch that. And basically, they are asteroid fields. Okay. And whenever they say asteroid belts, it's kind of, there is, some people will call it, but there's an inner, if you want to call it an asteroid belt, there's one inner asteroid belt that we know of and one outer asteroid belt. And let me show you what those are. And I like to call them asteroid fields. There's a ton of stuff you got to go look at in the videos here, ladies and gentlemen. I got a ton of information. If you just start back on my most recent one, I'd say probably the stuff with the Alaska stuff with the super giants bleeding through. Start right here and then cruising on through everything and you'll get pretty much caught up what's going on in space. And that pan stars is in fact not a comet. It is actually a falling flipping star. And this video is even more evidence to show the factual of that. Okay, so